tôi có một câu hỏi cho tôi phạm là What kind of film would you like to make? À, loại thể loại của phim nào các em muốn làm? Part of participatory video is ownership. Ownership from the participants of the story they want to tell. And it's your job as a facilitator to help them on this journey through building trust and a sense of creativity and shared vision. Then to building story literacy so the participants can understand what factors, what elements of story they need. And then finally to film making techniques so they can put into action um, and, and find through talking to people and filming scenes the story that they want to tell. Breathing useful. We breathe with the circle. We breathe in. Yeah. And out. Eyes closed. And then we go this way. Excellent. And then we go this way. Lots of people call the first part of any workshop a warm up but I try and avoid this. Really what you're trying to achieve in the beginning of any workshop uh, is, is quite complex. You're, you're building a sense of creativity, of fun, but you're also building a trust, not just between the participants, but of you as the facilitator. Trust that you're going to help them make this journey towards making a film. <laughs> so take your time. This first section of team building, relationship building, and trust building is really essential. He brings in the most important element. He introduces the most important element. The joy, the fun. So the more time you invest in doing exercises and playing games together that build this sense of creativity and fun, the more this will pay off when you come to the next sections of the workshop. But we haven't introduced ourselves yet. Young, bad, bad, bad. The participants might know each other already, but that doesn't mean to say we just treat it like a warm-up. Team building, building a sense of community within the group, is really the foundation for which the rest of the workshop will build from. This is going to be a good workshop. See his energy. See this energy. He's hungry. Right? So hug. he's he's got focus. Yeah. Okay. Let's really see Zhang Ha's energy in all of us. Hunger. The, the group has a sense of being on the same page. Home. Change. Hold. Home. Change. So we have our names. Okay. And we have a little bit of team spirit. But it's not enough. We have three days to produce lots of things. We have got to build our team spirit. Okay, good. Okay. Well done. Hold. Okay. And now we want to go inside of ourselves. We've looked into each other's eyes with the hug. Yeah. So we've, we've learnt a little bit. We've touched and we've learnt a little bit more. Now we want to find something inside of us. Yeah. Uh, but have, okay, let's two, make a, have three let's minutes make a circle. to find an object where you can reveal a little bit about who you are. This is a sign of a creative person. Yeah. This book keeps a lot of my, my thoughts yeah, and my emotions. Yeah. I have been not so long, but I feel very confident when, I wear. when people come and ask me to help. I can uh, provide support for them. <laughs> is, this, 
Is this a useful skill if you are a filmmaker to try and get inside people, to try and understand what's inside them? Or do we just need the information, name, date? The, the worst thing, as you know, to do with a blind person is to pull them, leave them. Yeah? Yeah. And you see this all the time. People take people, blind people. They think they cannot stay, therefore they need looking after. We're going to look about how we relate to people in film, in life. A good way of leading a blind person is to do this. No holding. It's just this. It's just supporting. No need to lead. Their whole radar system is still working. The whole point of participatory video is that the young people making it must feel ownership of the story, that this is their story. Uh, your, your facilitation style has to be gently guiding and not too strong or not too uh, directive. We are building trust by being in partnership. Bit here, this is, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Here, just try and just be a bit more square on there. It might seem odd that after the warm-up we don't go straight into filmmaking and filmmaking techniques, but instead we start with storytelling. Is a, is a film just interviewing people? The backbone of any film no, is the story. Is, okay, what else is a film? The scene, yes. So it's so important in this section that you build this sense of story literacy. What else is a film? The, oh yes, the, oh yes, no, definitely. There will be a message in this film. Just, I want us to visualize what will be in the film when we watch it. What's the film about? No, film now, I get dizzy. Yeah. About environment. What about the environment? Climate change, how climate change affects the people's lives. Yes, <laughs> yes, That's, that is our story. This is us. We're, this is our story. It's getting exciting. Yes. Part of the documentary storytelling process is gathering and analysing facts and getting a picture of what is happening in the location and with the characters, and finding the story behind those facts. <laughs> So included in the workshop you're watching now was a section on climate change because that was the project we were working on. An expert worked with the participants to understand some of the facts and concerns surrounding climate change issues in the area that we were working in. As part of the storytelling process, the climate change section gave participants a sense of urgency in conveying their message and gave them a hunger for a voice that will carry into the following technical workshopping as a collective and deep sense of wanting to tell a story with all the tools they've learned how to use. So in the story section, a really simple exercise is to get participants to think about stories from their own culture. Three minutes, two stories, one sentence. Three, two, one. Mm. 
Then, once they've identified some stories, get them to analyse them, look at things like beginning, middle and end, a struggle, a characters and place. And once they start to analyse these stories, you'll find that uh, a, a kind of story literacy emerges where people begin to see that, yes, uh, most stories have a struggle. Uh, yes, uh, most stories do have a beginning, a middle and end. It's this sensitivity to story and story structure that you're trying to build in the storytelling section. Uh, respectful family, emotion between father and the Tell son. Tell me a bit about the heart of the story. Mm -hmm. yeah, the fairy tale of Vietnam is very famous, the Mukha, an honest uh, fisherman. It's really useful that after each small group has identified their own story, that you ask them to tell the story out loud to the other groups. After the stories have been told, ask the other groups to analyse what they've just heard. What are the protagonists motivated by? What was the time and place, the beginning, middle and end? There's a message, a message uh, to great. lead people to a better life. Right, good stuff. We're build, what we're doing here, we're building our story literacy. Because mm. all stories have common commonalities. Mm. Do you think when we go to the community on Sunday, we will find a struggle? Or will people just say, no, it's fine, happy, <laughs> happy, <laughs> no problem? By empowering them to tell their own stories and to share their own stories, these are the steps that slowly you're building their own confidence and self-esteem that they can achieve the film they want to make. So this afternoon we look at the third element, which is how to film all of this. Developing the participant's story literacy is yet another foundation to build before going to the next section, film making technique. So, we're all here to make a film, yes? And will the film we make be the first ever film about climate change? The next session what we're going to do is we're, start to, we're going to start to make some building blocks of our awareness about different kinds of film. So when we make our own film, we are building on what has gone before with facts. And we're going to show you three films of three very different styles. And we'll just show two or three minutes of each film. After watching, seeing all the facts by the pictures mm -hmm. and the things shown here, I was influenced. But as you have said, maybe it could have been more effective if we heard some different points of view. What does the farmer think? What does the other girl think? What does the boy think? Are you, a, you, you might have to be our sound man. Do you like, do you like sound? It wasn't silent. It was sound. But it was a small sound which made us feel a whole world of emotion of that girl. Yes. No one spoke. I think you're really onto something here. That the fact that you think the pictures uh, and that the sounds and no talking is the most powerful film. This means you you have cinema in your soul. You you, you can understand something about cinema because it's it's often not what people say. It's about what we see and feel. Do you want to be in this film? Do you, do you want your voice in this film? For our film, do we need to have some good data? So first thing, we need, in, we need facts. We're filming people in a community, bringing some of the kind of Al Gore style. We have got a community we're going to go and film. And we're going to have our sound and our camera. It's an interesting session. And we're going to film people who are affected in this particular area. It's had very strong cinemagraphic. For this project, we divided the participants into two groups, first unit and second unit. The first unit were responsible for interviews, and the second unit who were responsible for taking all of the, the cutaways, the, the B-roll, the shots of the scenes. So in each team, there were three members, the camera person, the sound recordist, and the director. 
What we did in this workshop was very quickly after we'd given the cameras out and the participants had learned them, we asked them to go outside of the training venue and just shoot some different kinds of shots. Don't worry too much whether about technique and getting it right or wrong, but go out into the public, get some interviews and, and come back and, and we learn by review. A way of building trust and a deeper sense of learning or ownership of learning is to give the cameras straight away to the participants. Participants take control of the equipment themselves and learn to respect it and to use it. So we're starting with unit two. We'll see some of their footage. Uh, as a facilitator, you can comment, but also you can ask for comments from the other participants. That's a very nice shot. Well done, Mr. What was interesting about that shot, what was uh, not so interesting about that shot. It's good. Even though it's a, a static shot, this is very nice too. Even if it's a static shot, wait for 10 seconds anyway. How could that shot have been improved? What could you have done to make it uh, more exciting? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's acceptable, but yes, you could have had the camera a bit more level with his eyes. And through this uh, dialogue and through this conversation with the participants, uh, the, the people behind the camera and you as facilitator, you're really developing a very rich learning environment where the main objective is that the participants feel that they own the equipment and they own the creativity. They feel an ownership that the film they're making is coming from them, not from the directions of the facilitator. So, so the aim of this exercise is that the front of the microphone is pointing Although you're always looking for the individual voice and the voice of the participants, there are some building blocks of filmmaking and storytelling that are essential to grasp and to learn. To be pointing to the mouth. So the first shot is the wide shot, where everything you want is in the frame. The second shot is the medium shot, where you're zooming in closer. You need to be listening and saying, what are the interesting sounds around here? Asking the participants to review their filming is the best way for them to improve. The more they see what they film, the more comments and feedback from the group that they hear, they'll then apply this to the next time they shoot. When it comes to writing the shot list, it's really the convergence of all of the learning so far in the workshop. Discuss in your team first, James. A shot list is basically a simple list of every shot needed to tell the story that participants have decided on. We started to make a list uh, with Mr. Ling about uh, interviews. To, I want you to write all the interviews you want to do tomorrow. It includes all of their learning so far, for example, what wide shots are needed or what establishing shots are needed, what medium shots, what close-ups, and very importantly, who needs to be interviewed to piece together the story and they're trying to tell. I want you to make a list of 10 shots that you're going to get tomorrow in our location. So people have moved out of their houses and gone to live, I assume, closer inland yeah, to a different community. So if this is the case, we have some very creative opportunities to create emotion. Zhang, I want you to think about making the viewer of this film feel empty when they see these shots. And Ching, you, you will have a real challenge here because you're going to really have to manage the, creati the creativity of your two people to make sure you get the shots on the shot list. Go for it. Ten shots. I want you to start your list not with the creative poetic shots, but with the stuff that you really need. Establishing shot of the village, shots of villagers doing their work, the fishermen, etc. etc. It's important the participants feel a sense of responsibility, not only to the equipment they are using, but to the people they are filming as well. This means that they shouldn't uh, manipulate uh, the subjects they're interviewing, that they should prepare them. Uh, and again, like the workshop, the first thing isn't the film, it's the community, it's the team building. And they must really learn to uh, see filmmaking as a way of engaging in a community. And if you engage in a community, the first thing you do is build the relationship, not switch on the camera.
Nhưng mà trước đây thì về mặt âm thanh thì chỉ biết cách cầm micro để làm sao mà nghe được tiếng thôi Chứ không chứ chẳng để ý đến những cái vấn đề xung quanh nó như là tiếng gió rồi nhiều thứ khác Nói. Một, hai, ba Thì chúng em cảm thấy rất là vui bởi vì ở chính tay chúng em đã quay được những thước phim có thể gọi là độc đáo À, và còn một điều nữa mà em học được đó là tính thân làm việc nhóm là rất rất là quan trọng cảm ơn là sự có mặt của các quý vị của đài báo đạt hài và tính cách không đánh cái thứ ba là là ngày hôm nay thì được đi thực tế thì em cảm thấy là hiểu rõ hơn về tác hài của biển đổi khí hậu à, những cái kiến thức mà thấy báo dài thì hôm nay thì em cũng được áp dụng vào thực tế rất là nhiều À, cũng giống như là cách quay phim hoặc là à, cách để à, đặt câu hỏi phỏng vấn cũng như đặt vấn đề